Hi, I'm Vlad with Glow Marble, and I'm going to teach you how to make an expensive and unique looking countertop with nothing but melamine and Glow Marble's epoxy. You can put our epoxy on anything like already existing tables, a video you can find right here, or you can put our floor epoxy on your floors right here. All materials I'm using are going to be in the links in the description below. I already cut my pieces of melamine, and for the sake of demonstration, I'm only doing a miniature countertop. This works with any size countertops. Now we're going to sand down the corners because epoxy works a lot better with rounded edges. Now a problem with melamine is that it's a very porous material right here. And no matter what type of liquid, whether it be epoxy or the primer, if it touches that, it's gonna get absorbed by the wood and you're gonna have a ruined project. And we're gonna fix that with some Bondo. All you do is make a half inch high circle of part A and then put a thin strip of part B right across. Just like that mix it together you got to work with this stuff pretty quick because the cure time for it is very very fast now it didn't take long for this batch to become completely unworkable so while you're mixing it don't mix too much it's always easier to go back and add some more later While the Bondo is hard but not completely set, we're going to remove all the excess with a razor blade because if we wait any longer, then it's going to be practically impossible to get that stuff off. And then to finish it off, we're just gonna hand sand the entire edge. Now it's time to use our primer. So we wipe this down with alcohol and then we're gonna use a white primer because the colors I'm using are white. Now that our primer cured, we're gonna sand it a little bit, but don't sand too hard, especially around the edges, because you might sand off the primer. Take a look at this. That's all gonna be in your epoxy if we don't clean it off. And the easiest way to do it is either with a vacuum cleaner or with an air gun. Now that everything is sanded, clean, and on level, it's time to start working with our epoxy. I'm gonna mix my metallics into my part B, and that's because it's a bit more viscous, a bit more liquid, and I'm doing this 24 hours before I actually mix it in with the part A and start pouring my epoxy. I'm doing this so that the metallics get thoroughly mixed into the epoxy and that there's no chunks inside. Using an electric mixer also helps a lot to mix in all the clumps. Once you mix it thoroughly, cover it with a piece of plastic to avoid dust getting inside and wait until 24 hours to mix in your part A and part B and start working on it. We're gonna mix two parts A to one part B and mix it thoroughly, scraping the edges, making sure that everything is mixed in.
Now it's time to lay on our epoxy. You can do this with polka dots, stripes, whatever you want. Each one is gonna give you a different pattern at the end. And now we take a regular plastic spoon and do this in random motions. Try not to repeat the same pattern or else you're gonna get a boring piece. We're gonna torch our surface with a butane torch to get rid of any bubbles. We're gonna do this like three times. You might also have a problem with these bald spots on the drop edge. And all you have to do is use your spoon, pick up the stuff that fell over, and just drag it over. So here's our finished product. It's super lightweight, it's durable, and it looks awesome. It looks kind of like an ocean somewhere in the Bahamas. I want you guys to comment down below what colors you would have used if you were doing this project. And don't forget to like and subscribe.